let's go straight to our next question. And this one comes from Untadile Mate, and it's based on differential calculus. Absolutely exciting question, right? So it appears as question 25, and question 25.1, we are being told that we need to find the test determine the derivative of f using first principles if f of x is 2 over x. Okay, this one is a problem for a lot of people. And the challenge is not really the fact that you guys don't know how to use a first principle formula, but it is the algebra that is engaged in trying to find the derivative of this particular question. So let's find the key word here before we even go anywhere. Keywords, first principle. Once we see the words first principle, we know we're going to need to use the formula for deriving from first principle, which says the derivative from first principle is given by the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, where everything is divided by h. Right. Now, what do you need here? Well, you just need to find what f of x is and what f of x plus h is, and then you can be able to find your answer from that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just say for, uh, for what we are looking at, we're still looking at uh, the limit, right, as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. Look at what is happening. We were told that f of x is simply 2 over x. That means f of x plus h will just certainly mean wherever you see x, replace it with x plus h. So 2 is a number, I'm still going to have that over, but where it says x, I'm now going to have x plus h, replacing x with x plus h, right? So my f of x plus h appears as 2 divided by x plus h, there's a minus, there's a minus, f of x is simply 2 over x, and everything is just divided by h. That's just the correct substitution that we're ending up with here. Okay, cool. Now, the problem that you guys always have is just adding or subtracting, in this case, these two fractions that you have on the numerator there. That is the problem that you guys always have. And I'll just share with you a technique of adding those. Remember, if you've got A over B minus C over D, and you need to actually do the subtraction because these are fractions, just draw a division line, keep the denominators as denominators. So the denominators, B and D, keep them as denominators, and then... Just multiply A and D, you'll get AD minus, multiply B and C, you're going to get BC. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Remember, you need to keep writing the limit as H approaches zero, okay? So for the numerator, which I'm going to enclose in this big bracket here so that you can be able to differentiate what I'm doing, right? Um, let's put the other closing bracket here. The big division line, I'll put it as a division sign and I'll put my H as there, where we're currently having it, right? So the numerator, those two fractions, draw the division line, keep the denominators as denominators. So my denominators were x plus h as well as x, so I'm keeping them there. And then it's just a matter of multiplying 2 and x. When you multiply 2 and x, you get 2x, and that's negative 2. Negative 2 times that becomes negative 2 times x plus h. So, which will then amount to the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x minus 2x minus 2h all over, don't break this one, of um, x plus h times x. If you did, there wouldn't be any difference. Change division to multiplication, then it's going to be 1 over h. And then from here, you will notice that 2x will subtract 2x out, and then we are left with negative 2h on the numerator. That h will then cancel the h that we have in the far right, and then we'll just simply end up with the limit. As h approaches 0 of negative 2 remains on the numerator. And on the denominator, we've got x plus h multiplied by x. So remember, it is always possible now to replace h as 0 once that h is gone. This is the problem. If this h here that comes with the formula is gone, once it's gone, then we can be able to find the derivative. If it's gone, then it becomes good news because you are now ready to replace your h as 0, you're going to get negative 2 over x plus 0 times x. The final answer says the derivative from first principle amounts to just negative 2 divided by x squared. And that will be the solution to the first question. Right. Let's go on to the second one. The second one says we now need to find uh, h prime of x if h of x is 2x cubed minus 4 over x. They're not telling you to use 
uh, the first principle formula now so we can apply our laws of differentiation for the second one. It says h of x equals to uh, 2x cubed, okay, minus 4 over x. There's another part there. Let's just check the third term. It's uh, 2x cubed minus 4 over x plus 3 square root x plus 3 square root x. And then if you work out the value of what we are dealing with now, it's just simply going to become a situation of trying to find the derivative using the power rule. We can't do the derivative using the power rule. We've got problems on this term and we also have problems on this term. Remember, you need to always make sure that you express your terms in the form coefficient base exponent, which means they must all be written in exponential form. Right, so let's express them in exponential form. You are simply going to have 2x cubed. Even though the first term is ready, we're not differentiating it because it is going to have to wait for everybody else to be ready before we can find the derivative. So 4 over x can be rewritten as 4x to the power negative 1. You're moving it to, it to the numerator. The exponent changes the sign. And then the square root is as good as a half. Now I'm ready to derive. Then I'm going to derive and say the derivative is 6x squared. Exponent times coefficient gives you 6. Exponent minus 1 gives you 2. Exponent times coefficient gives you plus 4. Exponent minus 1 gives you minus 2. Half of 3 gives you 3 halves x to the power half minus 1, which is going to become minus half. Always get into the habit of writing your exponents with positive values. So this is going to be 4 over. Take it back underground. It's going to be x squared plus 3 over. Now this x to the minus half is going to go and join 2. So it's going to be x to the half. And that would be the derivative of h if you are just using the concept of the power rule. Great stuff. All right, now the last question. Uh, question 25.2.2, uh, 8x cubed minus 27. 8x cubed minus 27. Okay, the third one says we need to derive, right? What are we deriving? 8x cubed minus 27 over 2x minus 3. Is it 2x minus 3 or 2x plus 3? Let's just check that quickly. It's 2x minus 3. Great stuff, right? Now, you can derive this unless if you use what is called the factorization technique. Right, so the d of x will be, the numerator is what we call the difference of two cubes. It's the same as a cubed minus b cubed. So how do you factorize that? You factorize it as follows. It's going to be a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. So which means my 8 is going to be 2x minus 3. And then square the first one, we get 4x squared, multiply them, change the sign, you're going to get plus 6x, square the last one, you get 9. And then everything is divided by 2x minus 3, right? And then after that, you're then going to um, cancel the brackets because they look the same there, uh, the 2x minus 3, you're ending up with just 4x squared plus 6x plus 9, which will amount to a beautiful, beautiful 8x plus 6. This will be your derivative for this particular question, right? Right. So this is actually what you needed to do. You just needed to factorize and find what the factors of 8x cubed minus 27 are. And then once you've done that, you'll notice that one thing cancels the other one. And then you're just left with 4x squared plus 6x plus 9, which you can then derive to get 8x plus 6 because the derivative of 9, which is a constant, will always amount to 0.